also necessary for your rack. You're going to need draws, be it an alpine draw or a quick draw. So if you've been sport climbing, you probably already have quick draws. Pretty much, I rack up the same draws for just about any climb that I get on. I will rack up two quick draws, two one-foot nylon draws, probably seven of these guys. These are the two, well, this is a standard alpine draw. I have the beaner on backwards in this case. Uh, but this consists of a two-foot runner, two-foot sling, and two carabiners. Three-foot runner in the alpine draw, and a four-foot runner in alpine draw. I know it doesn't look like that. I will go over that. This I just find these very, very useful. Not a lot of people use them. In fact, I can only think of a small, small handful of people that use them. But it's just a one foot nylon loop between two beaners. The advantage of this over a quick draw is since it's not stiff, the carabiner can wrap, it can move. It's a little more free to move without disturbing your pro. And it also inhibits the chance of the rope unclipping itself because if it's back clipped it can actually twist. The cams that I have, uh, the sizes of, I mean it's, it's a full range of like your most commonly used cams, uh, you know, sand's the bigger stuff over here, but I double up or triple up on all those sizes that are specific to where I primarily climb at, um, being the gunks. I'm generally okay if I go elsewhere. Um, I imagine if I went out uh, west and started doing a bunch of crack climbs, then I'd probably run into issues. What's the purpose of runners? It doesn't disturb your pro. So the rope can pull sideways on protection. It was really interesting coming from the East Coast where runners um, extending your draws was so crucial uh, because of the nature of the climbing and then coming on the west coast where there's a whole lot of crack climbing you're generally following one line uh, and people have even given me grief for not just clipping the rope straight into <laughs> the pro it, it's it's a force of habit i certainly don't ever think that there's a disadvantage to extending your pro if you have the opportunity to. Certainly, if you're at your limit, you just want to get the rope clipped in, and I totally get that. But cases where you see nuts pop out when people get above them, well, it's just because the rope's yanking on that nut in an oddball direction. The longer you extend it, less chance that's going to happen. So the alpine draw, it's a very, very simple technique. We have my two foot runner here. I have two carabiners. I take one carabiner, I pass it through the other, clip into the free two ends, and there you go. You'll notice on mine, one of the carabiners has, is a hood wire, I believe that's what they call that, and that wire covers the hook on the nose, and it allows the uh, carabiner to freely move across the dyneema without snagging it. So if I were to do this on this end, you can see it kind of hooks onto it, or has a tendency to do that anyway. The hood wire prevents that, or helps prevent that. I do the same thing with a three foot runner, it just hangs a little lower. Now, the four foot runner, this has sort of been resting. This is not the right beaner for this draw. Um, and that beaner does not exist amongst my gear. That means that this is somebody else's beaner and that other person probably has mine. Uh, 
this is going to happen, by the way, especially if you're traveling around and climbing with new people, you're going <laughs> to, gear's going to get swapped around like that. Uh, fortunately, that's not too far off. I was trying to figure out a way of getting this into a configuration where it was compact enough, could be used as a regular draw and wouldn't snag other gear or my leg or something along those lines because of its length. So if I were to take a four foot runner and put it into a regular Alpine configuration, that's how long it would be. Now, I do know there are some, I've seen people, what they'll do is they'll just clip one end into the other and it carries around like this. The problem with Dyneema though is this can kind of pull through and like it's a giant loop which will easily snag other equipment. I was trying to figure out a way of getting this into a configuration where it was compact enough could be used as a regular draw and wouldn't snag other gear or my leg or something along those lines because of its length. So if I were to take a four foot runner and put it into a regular Alpine configuration that's how long it would be. Now, I do know there are some, I've seen people, what they'll do is they'll just clip one end into the other and it carries around like this. The problem with Dyneema though is this can kind of pull through and like it's a giant loop which will easily snag other equipment. I didn't really want to do that. So what I did was I came up with the following starts off the same way as a regular Alpine draw. We're going to pass this guy through, but rather than bringing it all the way down to here, we're going to bring it halfway down. Oh, that seems going to be in the wrong spot either way. And then what I'm going to do is grab these loops here, bring them through that carabiner and clip it back into the top. And voila. Again, I don't know if that, that, that might already be a thing of some sort. And the one problem with this, didn't happen in that scenario, is there is one of the strands you can clip into, which I think it will end up with like a loop like that in the top beaner, uh, which isn't, a, I, don't, I don't think that's a huge deal, but still it's just worth considering. I'll do that again just uh, in case didn't catch it the first time. So we take one end, pass it through like we would a regular alpine draw. We grab the spare loops, pass them through this beaner, and then clip it into the top one. And there you go. I've been using that for a few years now. Again, I don't know if that's already a thing, but I find it to be a wonderful way of configuring the four foot, four footer into an Alpine draw. So for a given climb, what I will take, and so it doesn't really matter what the climb is. I generally bring these things up every time. Two quick draws, seven two foot runners, a three-footer and a four-footer and I would say this is largely optional but the two of the one-foot nylon draws. So in example i.e. less rack up for a climb I have one picked out right here this is called Jingus the Cat and only because there's other little nuances to this that might be worthwhile to take note of. So if I look down at the bottom I can see single rack to two and a half inch, and it mentions two of two each of 0.6 to one inch cams. I'm also going to read the description of this. This is an excellent pitch. 
is on the left end of the wall, and is well worth seeking out. It follows a pleasant finger crack along a right-leaning, right-facing corner. So you can pick up a couple things from this. Nuts will probably be useful in the case of this climb. And two and a half inches, single rack to two and a half inches. I don't have a piece that is two and a half in inches, but it doesn't mean I can't cover that size. A number three would probably be useful because while at when this thing when this cam is very tipped out a number two that's not really an ideal placement for that particular cam so I'll probably take the number three with me so let's start it off uh, a single rack two two and a half inches well here we have some nuts and then I have my cams itself this is a point two and this is a number three. Now I mentioned finger crack, and all that's telling me is that the larger nuts, I'm probably not going to have an opportunity to place these. So there's a single in the size range that I need. And I need two from 0.6 to one. So, again, I don't have a .6. Um, in fact, that is almost like right in between the .5 to .75. So, hey, I got them. Why not bring both? So we can go .5, .75. And one inch. And I'll bring along the thumb loop. <clears throat> so I can rack that in order. .3. one inch, 0.75 and 0.5. Then I have singles underneath of that. I got some passive pro. And I should already have my essentials on my harness. They include the following, your nut tool. Oh. Now, the cordlet. It is worth noticing when you are reading, or trying to figure out anyway, uh, what kind of anchor you're going to encounter. Now in this case, I'm fairly certain it's just going to be a set of rings at the top, so there's going to be actual hardware into the rock. You notice like um, at the top of 28, which is knee record chimney, we see that it actually ends at a tree. Um, why do I say this? Well. So my PAF, my blue PS, is probably all I need to do Jingus the Cat. I probably don't need to bring the cordlet. If this was a multi pitch, because I don't believe Jingus is, um, where is it, 31? Yes, Jingus is not. It's just out by itself. Correct. If it was a multi pitch, I'd almost guaranteed bring the uh, cordlet with me. I will have to, if I have my followers planning to um, also climb this from the ground, or if this was a multi pitch, again, that means I'm probably going to wrap off of this climb. In this case, or if there's actually fixed hardware up there and rings and whatnot, then I could probably just be lowered. But I know some people feel very strongly about uh, lowering versus wrap, wrapping. So let's just say for the sake of argument, we're going to wrap off of this. I'll definitely need an ATC in that case. And quite honestly, uh, you should probably have one. I just keep one on my harness at all times. But if your follower is, if you're going to belay them from the ground, I don't need the locker for guide mode, I'm sorry. If they are gonna come up and meet me, then I would definitely would take that along with me. Um, now, in this case, maybe there aren't, it, maybe there isn't a set of rings at the top of it. it. Certainly looks like there is. I can always untie this cordlet and just use it in the configuration that I have this set aside for. Or, 
I could just take this along with me and then um, configure that as a PAS. Or <laughs> if there is a two bolts with a chain between them, I could just take a clove hitch or I'm sorry, just to take a locker and tie a clove hitch into that. Again, multiple ways to do this. I'm just going for convenience sake. I'm pretty sure what I have there would suffice. Remember, there's three lockers on that point. So if I'm wrapping, why not take the small cordlet for a Prusik? My blayer is probably gonna be using the Grigri. And of course, I'll probably need some draws. Now, in this case, it mentions I'm following a dihedral crack. That means I probably don't have to extend much gear. Though, if I look at this image, it does look like I might be pulling some roofs. So, having some runners would be really, really nice in that regard because otherwise the rope will be sucked all the way in. You'll have a piece plugged in right at the base of that. And then it rubs over the corner and it uh, causes rope drag. So let's just go with the standard of what I bench talked about earlier. I'll probably only need one, two, three, four, five, six. I always like having at least one four-footer and one three-footer. And of course, one, two draws. I kind of think of the draws as utility work at the top, but the best thing is, is as you start chewing up gear, so like this climb, what is this, 10C, 10B. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably be on 10B, I'd feel okay, but I'm probably gonna be plugging gear. So if I know if I'm gonna be using a lot of gear, I can always take more. I'm pretty sure that would be sufficient. I can always take more draws if I wanted to. But right here, between draws, some essentials, and then the rack itself is probably what I would need for that particular climb. Um, in my case, I'd probably even take more of uh, some smaller stuff. Uh, it would just make me feel a little bit better. And here, the best part is, if you don't want to carry it, just plug it earlier. Just don't be that guy that ends up coming, falling off a climb or decking off a climb with a full rack of gear on them. <laughs> you know, if you have it, plug it, use it. You can always just plug it and get rid of it if you don't want to carry it up. Also worth mentioning, I do have some larger cams over here. Got the 3.5 and number four. I have very, very rarely used both of those, though I have. It just depends on the climb. Especially if you look at a lot of stuff in Yosemite, you'll find instances where sizes even bigger than these are useful. It just all depends, one each of Five inch. That was just a random route I opened up to. It just depends on the area you're climbing in. That's why it's sort of good to familiarize yourself with those particular areas because that could dictate the gear that you buy. So I hope that helps. This was a far more comprehensive video than the last one. I actually made notes, started checking off stuff that had went over, planned this out. I in fact shot this video yesterday just ad hoc and I wanted to see what worked what didn't what I was focusing on what I wasn't and then comparing that against two years ago it's pretty crazy it's a lot of fun again nothing wrong with note taking but if you don't want to take notes video is a pretty good substitute so the catalyst video gunk climber and myself are looking to do some pretty big wall stuff in spring of next year and we have started to take inventory on what we have and what we need to get. You probably noticed I have the four or two sets of Jumars. Don't ask me why I have two sets. I also have a set of aid trees, a set of Fifi's. I got a hook, 
Uh, I got some other things, and that is all necessary if you wanted to actually aid climb. Uh, the Jumars are even necessary if you wanted a rope solo. What I went over today is not to do either of those, uh, even though I would like to start getting into it. So, we're taking inventory, and I just thought this would be an excellent opportunity to build the rack all over again, or at least for you guys. I certainly hope this helps. If you have questions, feel free to ask. If you have comments and critiques, and I know some of you will, feel free to post. I am not about blocking the comment section of these videos. So take care, guys. Be safe, try hard, and have a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, it just keeps getting better and better for me. Till next time.